Ooh. All right, here we go. We are live on the Horcast Live. We got Tom Martino of DWN Productions hanging out. We got the neck pissa like over here. And uh, I got to still get used to the camera thing. It's been a little bit. We got the harvester down here. Steve Donnelly's got some questions he's asked me to personally ask because he's stuck at work because he's a hard-working Zooligan homie. Never forget that. Takes care of his family and his lady. You know how he does. But in the meantime, Tom's here with us. Thank you, Tom, for hanging out. Right on. No worries. Appreciate you guys having me for sure. Uh, not in pissa? a sexual way. You guys have never had sex with me. I don't want to say thank you for having me when that never happened and never will happen. I'm sorry, but oh, I just have to let you know that straight up. That's right, Harvester. No matter how many masks you have made by Tom, he will not sleep with you. God damn it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's fucking awesome. Real quick before I forget to say it, my girl was in here a little bit ago. And as you know, Tom, I've gotten a few things off you, your movies and things, a movie poster and such. But she wanted to let you know that there's only two people that wake her up from a dead sleep laughing her fucking ass off. And that's <laughs> Jim, Jim Cornette and yourself and Joe. So. <laughs> Oh, that's just because we're obnoxious, you see. Well, I mean, every time you crack up, and it's usually at Joe's expense, it's it's like she can hear the constant back and forth and laughter going on. She's like, boy, Joe must have done something funny because Tom's cracking up. And, and we've been watching you for like three years, man. So, Oh, yeah. Appreciate that shit for sure. Oh, yeah, dude. Your humor is top notch. And I wanted to focus a little more on the podcast ex as aspect of things with you on this show because you being a fellow podcaster, and I don't think you get en enough people don't tune in to see what's going on over there. There's magic going on with you and Joe. And I feel like <laughs> if we told more people to fucking hang out with you guys and we had you on and, and we focus a little more on that than just the special effects aspect, which will go there. But I mean, it's it, 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 fucking are, hilarious. Yeah, you guys are have been friends for what over ten years? For sure, yeah. He, I can yeah. say that Joe is my oldest friend. Right, physically and, uh, oldest. Exactly, <laughs> and, and, with, and, and on top of that, uh, Joe is also what like ten years older than you. Yeah, uh, a little more than that. Okay, so you guys 13. got a little bit of an age gap there where you can fill yeah. gap between a couple generations on your show where I can also relate to Joe where I'm I'm 43 this February. So I know a lot of the hairband shit he loves and the stuff from the 80s and even some of the stuff from the 70s that carried over that was still cool. But it's like I also get your aspect because I'm a 90s kid and I also like all the stuff from the 90s a lot. So it's like you guys colliding at times. It's like, man, I cannot pick which side I agree with because you guys both hit it right on the head. <laughs> you don't have to agree with either one of us. Come up with your own decisions and thoughts. We're just there to fucking bullshit, hopefully give you a laugh and let you know about DWNProductions.net and FastCustomShirts.com. Hell yeah, man. And also... By the way, I'm wearing one of the Fast Custom shirts. I got the Harvester shirt on right here. Hey, me too. Mine says fuck on it a bunch. Yeah. Joe. Ah. You will not hey, my hoodie was done by Joe, too. Joe you gets my hoodies, too. Shirts, you will not get a cheaper deal on a bundle of shirts. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I got to keep up with these comments. With everybody, people are fucking. I know, I know a lot of people are telling me that they were really excited that you were going to be on, Tom. Because for me personally, because I've been watching you, there was a few people that I was really looking up to as I started this whole thing, and uh, you were one of them. Luke Franklin, who interviewed a, quite a few uh, popular people, and uh, I also watched Fats King with Pixar. It didn't happen a lot, and I was like, man. I wish there was some way I could do something like that, but also like, cause 
I'm going to tell you right now, the thing that really made me feel like it had to be done was there's not enough uh, healing in the underground since everybody knows the split that happened. And it's like, why do we focus so much on one negative event when there's a family tree that grew and each branch has its own little connection in the underground from the seeds that were planted by the people before? You know what I'm saying? Sure. Well, yeah. So I figured the humor. You're smoking, though. I mean, you know, the humor in, in the albums that we used to listen to by Twisted, ICP and shit, that all helped everybody like come together when they heard them records whether you like the wicked shit or not the funny shit always pulled you in so with our yeah, show i was like i was uh thinking like i was just uh thinking of music i used to listen to and for some reason full clip plug that puss came into my head <laughs> and it was like, Jesus Christ, i used to drive around listening to this and not be embarrassed <laughs> That's After classic. I hit it, her Nedden goes gush. Thank <laughs> fuck most people don't know what Nedden is. Otherwise, they look at me like an even bigger asshole. <laughs> On what? True. Exactly. Sometimes I, I, I'll be listening to some ICP and saying some words, and they're like, are you making words up? And I'm like, no, you just don't understand the juggalo lingo. <clears throat> So yeah, oh yeah. Scoochalucha says that's from Dumpin', of course. One of the best records, dude. I fucking love that shit. I got to see him one time at the uh, at the uh, gathering in 2002. That was awesome. So Tom, how did yes. you get in to special effects? I know you've told people before, but for those that don't know, like, how did you get into the college that you were into? And go from there to working with underground artists on your props and what, you know, you do. Sure. Uh, yeah, about high school, you know, that's about the time when they say to start making those old life choices. So I was flipping through a Fangoria and seen an ad for uh, Tom Savini's special effects makeup program. And I said, oh, hey, this is considered an actual college. Okay, <laughs> let's go check it out. And uh, so I went there. And uh, during the walkthrough or whatever, a few people were just like, no, don't go. But, you know, I don't take advice too well. So I went and, yeah, you know probably could have saved a shit ton of money just uh doing it at home with trial and error especially now with the fucking internet and youtube anything you want to watch any how-to shits on there so uh i mean i did learn the stuff but it was kind of you know it uh it, it was more of a Hey, let me take some money from these fat boys reading Fangoria. <laughs> it just at the time I went, it uh, it wasn't what it could have been, or maybe is now. I think it's still going now. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but uh, I actually had a special request being taught like how to make a mask. You would think that would be like a class one oh one. No. Yeah, like prosthetics and masks and stuff. Well, I mean, they taught you how to do prosthetics. Like uh, one full semester was, uh, okay, we're going to teach you how to sculpt, mold, and apply a prosthetic. And that's like weeks and weeks and weeks. We could get this shit done in one week, baby. Come on now, stretching this shit out this fucking far. It was just silly shit like that. So. uh it is what it is, you know. I went there. No going back and changing the past now. It is what it is. Uh, so after that, I said, all right, now it's time to find some work. So it's just been, at the time, message boards, now social media, just going around saying, hey, I do this shit. If anybody likes my shit, hit me up. So that's about it. And then, you know, people throughout the years have, 
hit me up. Uh, one of the first dudes who I did stuff for that you guys would probably know is uh, Mars. Cool dude. I did his uh, beat up style fucking mask for him. And uh, I want to say he talked to uh, Aiden family. And I was able to show one of my shorts at uh, opening one of their concerts in Houston. So that was cool. That's and dope. then, uh, yeah, it was cool for sure. And then, uh, who else? I did some stuff for uh, <laughs> Kung Fu Vampire years and years and years and years ago. Uh, a lot of a lot of horrorcore rappers that came and went did stuff for Dirty Worms. Uh, man, it sucks putting you on the spot like this because I'm gonna feel like a dick because I'm forgetting somebody. But uh, yeah, years and years right. go by, and then uh, my buddy Jesse hooks me up with uh, Bill from AXE, and then I've just been doing shit with them for uh, five, five or so years now, and I yeah. appreciate that greatly. Because I mean, I tell him this all the time, but having that constant work come in has definitely changed my life. Because uh, I don't oh, yeah. know if you guys could figure this out or not. Looking at you, you all look like smart gentlemen but uh it's pretty goddamn hard to sell a mask outside of october probably yeah, not bad. the smartest fucking thing to go <laughs> into but uh still here man 19th year uh able to get by and a big part of it is because uh axe keeps throwing me the work so i appreciate that shit for sure i mean you definitely slay it on the sculpts for them guys Thank you. I've got one question about that too. And I don't know if you can answer it or not, because I know you guys got a little bit of secrecy to what you guys do now. Well, I got a couple, but the, the, the main question that I was going to ask was when you were introduced and, and they kind of tie into each other, when you were introduced to bill and he asked you to do work for him. Now, was you free reign on creating what you created for them for the first time? Or did he have a lot of uh, input in the process? Uh, Bill hit me up before AXE, and uh, he wanted like a scarecrow mask and a Necronama clown mask. This was fucking years and years and years ago. Uh, those were some silicone masks I did, if I remember. He just kind of gave me the idea and pretty much what i do with all custom work hey if you want some custom work made head on over to dwnproductions.net but i'll sculpt it all out and you know send pictures you like it like this do you want anything changed so nothing set in stone until you give me the word and then it's literally set in stone so uh yeah it's just it's just a lot like that it's a lot of sculpting taking pictures what do you like what do you don't like and then uh, with the AXE masks, I'm, uh, I am I want to say I'm 90% sure that all the uh, reference images I've gotten were uh, designs that uh, old Jake cooked up. So uh, there's that. But still, every artist, you can take someone's image and then you'll do it through your own filter or whatever. So most of it is... Uh, excuse me the uh axe masks those have came from uh his concept designs i guess you could say it then filtered through me you're, you're talking about uh, uh eight legs jacob cook yeah okay right on right on i think because he's a bit he's the main artist for them and man i gotta say that's their nail in the coffin with lle they already got their designs done their ideas drawn through him Everything comes from the mind of that guy. And with him being on their team, every design is always going to be a killer fucking design. And even M and E have used him in a time or two to fucking, you know, do like the box on, uh, my house of crazies, uh, wall display, the mask for it. He did the drawing of the guy coming out of the, you know, the yeah. great shit. And that's fucking, he's such a great artist, dude. And, uh, to know that really, sets me at ease when it comes to the future of making those masks because you always wonder how do they look so great you know and to know that he has a part in uh throwing that together that's pretty fucking cool well yeah he does it, some good shit for sure 
And also, the uh, 3.0, I wanted to say, dude, you knocked it out of the fucking park with it because a lot of people felt like between the Dweller being a little small in the face and the one the, or 2.1 being a little big on the face, this one fits exactly like a 2.0 but it has some of the features of a 2.1, and that's fucking beautiful, dude. Right on. Uh, glad you dig it. I, uh, for one, though, happen to be pro making all different sizes for the different masks just because everybody has different face shapes. So, you know, one that you're saying, oh, this sucks a dick, I can't wear it right. It might fit like a fucking glove for somebody else. So Yeah. That was started out with the sculpt for the uh, Dweller mask. Say that again? For the Dweller mask. For the sculpt for your Dweller mask that you uh, had Pebs uh, do the runs on. Did, did Was that the first idea for it was to make a smaller forever face? Uh, yeah. I mean, at the time, people were saying I think something was too big. So I just tried to make it a different size, I guess. I like got all you. of them, I try and make a different size <clears throat> just because of like what I said. So, because everybody has a different fucking, you know what I'm saying? Right, you right. Got skinny rail motherfuckers, and then you got big fat guys. You know, they're going to fit different on whoever. <laughs> Harvester raises his he? He's a big fat fuck over there. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, shit, I'm uh, like six four, three hundred pounds. So I'm saying I fucking get the big fat guy masks too. I'm just saying like different shit for different people. Yeah. Eldrick Horrors has a question for Tom. Should I get a bust to sculpt or just start on a board? Uh it depends on what you're sculpting. If you want to sculpt uh like a mini bust or something, build yourself up a wire armature. If you want to sculpt a head, uh, you know, if you wanted a mask, they sell uh, gimmicks about from here to here up that you can sculpt on. Or, you know, you can make a pipe and flange armature. Uh, everybody does different shit, man, or lady. I forgot who you said it was, but uh, it's really, or they or them, whoever the fuck. But uh, it's really up to you, like whatever the fuck you feel comfortable with, really. Facebook yeah. users Chris Jericho is the goat. Sean Michaels. Him. I know exactly who that son of a Shawn bitch Michaels is. Sean Michaels is an ass hat, and he said, fight me, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fighting anybody. I'm too cool for that shit, dog. <laughs> in case anybody doesn't know, too, Tom's the person that sculpted and uh, done most of my uh, harvester mask and these things are great man like Thank i love you. them tom and i'm i appreciate your work on them i don't know yeah, appreciate we're, you, dude. we're waiting on a line of those to come out man i already got the shirt i need me one of them harvester masks for real man yeah they're great man i really just they fit great you know tom tom was like on it you know had some ideas and tom just went wild with it and i love I'm them gonna this right now Harvester is an example of a deal done right through a mask maker. I'm just going to say that. He's independent. He wants his own shit done. And if you want to know how to do the shit right, you hit him up, you talk to Tom, and you will have yourself a good experience, I'm sure. Yeah, like I said, I've been doing this shit 19 years. I'm fucking obviously not going to fuck anybody over. This is what I do. So I'm straight up. If you hit me up, you say, hey, I want this exact replica. I'm just like, ah, I would look at my style and judge by that to see if you want to do shit. And if I fucking don't have the time, I'll be like, ah, maybe hit me back in a month or so. So, I mean, I'm pretty fucking honest with everybody who comes through and wants something made. So, And I got to say, Tom's a fucking machine. Tom can, like, he when he gets after it, he pumps these things out. Yeah. Like his work I mean, not it's too. really just if I'm not working, I'm just going fucking crazy because I'm in my head all the all the time just worrying about shit. So if my hands are just busy and I'm working on something, I'm not thinking of anything else. And you know, that's probably not the healthiest thing, but <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, I'm on board with you though, Tom. I work all the time, you know, so I get it. You always feel like there's something you're not doing. 
and uh, you're a man after my own heart as far as work ethic, work ethic goes. So, totally killing it. I wanted yeah, to bring up. I don't. Uh, Tom, you, you used to work live. Do you ever plan on working live again? Well, if you uh, which you are a listener of DWN Productions THC podcast sponsored by Fast Custom Shirts, where oh at boygob.com. Uh you you've noticed that uh us going live has sucked a dead dog's dick because <laughs> my internet is shit and it craps out. So uh spoiler alert, we are uh, recording the show tonight not going live and we are not going to be going live for the foreseeable future but uh still boygob.com youtube it'll all be uploaded there so you're not gonna miss shit it's just i mean we record latest shit and fucking i appreciate the people who do watch live but if we can get better quality by not going live then yeah that's what we're gonna do so uh what i should have said is no, it's fucking hard to. I'm surprised this hasn't shit out yet. <laughs> I'll tell you what, too. Anybody that didn't get in on Tom's live painting with him, I was, Which was, I was there. Everybody? And it was dope. So <laughs> I I had a great time. We just kind of chilled. It was very organic. We had a good time. I think Tom had a good time. And I think the mask came out dope, you know? So Hell yeah. Glad you dug it for sure. I thought it was pretty pretty easy for you know teaching somebody how to paint something fucking what three states away yeah definitely went to go went over pretty good technology mm. how much do you charge for a sculpt a mask it all depends on what you want what your design is and what you want it made out of <laughs> <clears throat> So there's options. Yeah, I mean, you can come at me with a half mask that'll be like a $300 mask. Or you can say, hey, I want this fucking plastic bust made. And I'll be like, all right, cool. I want about $7,000. So it really all depends on what you want made, you know? Yeah. So, Tom, how did you get introduced to the underground? Like, what show, what, like, what how was you shown the juggalo scene because i know you were introduced to that at some point yeah uh it was i fucking sixth seventh grade maybe i grew up in the chicago land area so i mean it was really yeah so i mean it was really right around there i had a buddy who lived across the street he was like, hey, listen to this. And I was an impressionable, impressionable young man. So I'd be like, oh, this is great cult music. I love it. So, uh, yeah, I listened to that shit for uh, years and years and years. And these days, I don't really listen to much music. As fucking odd as that sounds, considering what I do for a living, I just don't listen to a whole hell of a lot of music. A lot of movies, if you can believe that. I know, fucking unbelievable shit, but yeah, I'm more of a movie dude. <laughs> Would have never oh, guessed that from your podcast at boygob.com. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna start moving towards that aspect of things. Uh the uh Steve Donnelly, Kill of the Alley Geist, wanted me to ask you a question about race wars, the remake. He wanted to know if uh the creature um was that something that was a uh pcp um hallucinogenic like relationship or was that something that was really there because he wanted to put that finally to rest all right a uh, spoiler alert for everybody who hasn't seen race war the race war the remake the uh first movie i directed which uh just showed up on tubi so uh you can watch it for free if you'd like but a spoiler oh. alert for that yes it is a uh, shared hallucination well there you go steve donnelly i know that you're watching from work because you wanted to be here and you couldn't be because he's a part of this team right now but he wanted me to make sure and ask you 
There you go. There's your answer. You can finally put that to rest in your mind. <laughs> What about yeah, if you uh, rewatch it, the big fat lesbian smoking all the cigarettes and eating the donuts or whatever the fuck he says, Oh, it's a shared hallucination too. So yeah, that's the uh, explanation there. And that's why yeah. I have facial hair because I look like that. If I don't. <laughs> <laughs> How about fisted? Do you think fisted will ever make it on the TV? Uh, Wild Eye releasing, they picked up all three of my movies, so, uh, you know, they'll be on DVD at some time, maybe they'll be on, uh, Tubi, Fisted's a little wild, it's, uh, you know, it's not, it, I, I don't want to say, it's not that graph, but I mean, there's some wild shit in there, but, you know, it's all in the sake of comedy, Race Wars labeled as a horror movie on uh, Tubi, but it's it's a comedy. There's nothing fucking scary about fucking any of those movies. They're all just tee -hee. That's it. I gotta say, Tom's lip work on Fisted, my God. Or not, uh, Joe's lip work, I should say. On the potato. Yeah, I, was say, I, was <laughs> I still have mine sealed, by the way. I have not opened either one of my copies. Nice. It is now rare and out of print until they put out the second release. So hey, that means that I can keep them wrapped up then. That's a good that's a good thing I told you that. That's fucking awesome. Unfortunately, it's a DWN Productions product, so nobody gives a fuck. So you might as well <laughs> open that shit up and watch it. <laughs> so, Tom, I got a question for you. Sure. What exactly is it about Paddington that you dig? Oh, he's just fucking charming. I grew up watching that uh, stop-motion Paddington ch show and... You know, stop motion, that's in the effects things and all that. And I always thought stop motion and Ray Harryhausen shit was just fucking cool. All that clay animation shit. And then that fucking movie came out and I just went to see it as a goof and it changed my life. I was like, God damn, I need to be a better person. If this <laughs> fucking immigrant can come over here and rise up from being a hobo, find a family and never be down on himself and shit then why the fuck can't i so yeah paddington's the fucking man and if you're not down with paddington fuck you and that's the realest <laughs> shit i've ever said fuck yeah so pretzel yeah. says shout out to dwn he helped inspire to get into crafting faces and sfx Right on. Shout out to you, too. Glad I could be of service. Fuck yeah. Pretzel in the house. Thanks for tuning in, Pebs. We appreciate you, man. And we got General Deuce up in Canada. What up, homie? We got fucking Boys 13 in the house. We haven't done a book for you yet, but we might be able to make that happen. You never know. Um, I wanted to ask you also, uh, when it comes to... Uh, the forever faces. Um, the one thing I wanted to talk to you about was the first design you ever did. Like, um, was it, did you, did you sculpt any, uh, 1.1s or 1.0s or was it just strictly the 2.0 that you started on? Yeah. The Necronomicon and that scarecrow that was at, and then uh, lost my number, didn't like the product. I don't know, for whatever reason, I wasn't asked to do the uh, 1.0. And then for whatever reason, they were looking for uh, somebody else when the 2.0 came along. And my uh, my longtime buddy, old Jesse Stir Crazy, put us on. Uh, back together and uh it was because of him that now i'm doing all this stuff you're talking about stir crazy like the 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 guy that puts together music and shit yeah okay we gotta get I've this guy him for like over two decades for real 
I don't know why, but almost every episode, this name gets dropped in almost every single thing that we do. Like every artist seems to. I can tell you why. why. You want to know why? Yeah. Why? She's a bad motherfucker. That's why. Well, there you heard it from Tom. Stir crazy is a bad motherfucker. <clears throat> and that's the second realest shit I've said in my life. Stir crazy, don't do interviews, Noise said. Well, that makes sense because he's a bad motherfucker. You don't need to. <laughs> yeah, he speaks for himself, his work. Mm hmm. Yeah, we got fucking Brown. done a bunch of shit for music you guys have probably fucking heard before and not even known it. Probably. Long fucking Donald time. Brown. We're old ass men now. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, Donald. We appreciate you, man. Sign maker for the underground. We love you. And thanks for oh, that. Yeah, it was good shit, too. Fuck yeah, dude. We 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 got a few people that fuck with us that'll come in here every once in a while and say hey. Uh, he said he wanted to know what's a highlight of your career and what's one of the coolest things you feel you accomplished. Oh man, I mean, uh, the fact that I've been able to survive nineteen years just off of my art is. That's fucking always mind blowing. I don't want that to sound like it's up my own ass, but that's fucking Joe. He recently like talked to me about that shit and it opened my eyes to like, wow, that is kind of fucking incredible because I do. Yeah. This time has just passed by so quick because every day I just wake up and do the same goddamn thing. Time just melds together and I don't really have time to stop and smell the roses. So, uh, I mean, that's cool. Uh, when AXC had that billboard and fucking masks I made were on it, it was like, holy shit. I know, uh, you know, that's just anybody can fucking pay to have a billboard put up. But, you know, they thought uh, images of something I made was worth the money to spend on that. So that was fucking awesome. Uh, being a movie dude, having all making a movie god damn that let alone having three movies made and having them all get distribution that's fucking crazy uh yeah i mean every day i'm just like god damn i gotta come on dude quit fucking struggling get this shit win this war yeah. fucking do it but you know you think for a second and you'd be like, God damn, I might not have the money, but you did a lot of fucking shit, dog. So just relax and try to enjoy it, which is fucking hard because about two and a half years ago, I dude, I'm not going to get totally into the whole thing because the last two and a half years have been fucking rough as fuck for me and my family. But uh, ah, about two and a half years ago. I'm going to the uh, mold shed to uh, pull some stuff out. And I just thought for a minute, it was like, God damn, shit's coming together and shit's working out. And I swear, as soon as I said that shit, my fucking phone rang and I got some fucking horrible news that just changed our lives. And so now I never go, yeah, I'm going to stop and fucking appreciate this shit. Because I feel if I do, something horrible is going to happen. <laughs> you're you're going to juice what you already got going on. I get that. Exactly. So yeah, it's I mean, just, uh, it's life. Everybody and uh, enjoy your life. And uh, try and live each day for itself, I guess, because you never know when shit will change forever. All right, dicks and stuff. Let's giggle about shit. Yeah, dicks and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, movie-wise, um, you tend to like horror movies but i also find that you're very hard on a lot of horror movies um do you feel that if a horror movie takes itself too seriously it already uh fucks itself when it comes to uh 
your own opinion of the movie? Ah, uh, not really. Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, uh, serious horror movies that I like. Let's say uh, Autopsy of Jane Doe. That's a pretty serious one, I guess. Uh, I'm more of a comedy dude. Uh, comedies are the movies I like uh, first. It's just, uh, you know, some of them tend to have the over-the-top gore and <laughs> shit like that. So they just, they're like race war. They're labeled horror movies, even though they're not. They're obviously comedies, but they got monsters and gore and shit in it. So uh, it's just different people like different shit. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure I could give you other examples if I went to my old library and look through all the discs to see what was up there but uh uh i like entertaining movies whatever genre it is i like entertaining movies and i like movies that are well made but not up their own ass like pretentious shit i guess i did take a look at the movie that you uh did not recommend but said was funny the uh do not what was it? Do not destroy or Oh, the the Legend of Foggy Mountain. Yes, yes, I did check that one out with, with uh Teresa, my lady. Right. And we did actually sit down and enjoy it, but we got what you meant by the comedy troop aspect of it. It was a lot like the uh other ones that are out there where they kinda tend to go back to the well with certain ideas throughout the movie. Yeah. Tom, that fucking mask is killing me, man. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. It's not the most comfortable thing. I've had this thing for about 20 years, so I was just like, oh, fucking... shit, I think I still have that in a box somewhere. Bro, it's fucking hey, eating your eyeballs. Get out of a box for this show. <laughs> That's fucking insane. Hey, <laughs> babe, I appreciate that. <laughs> it was eating his fucking eyeballs. I could only see half of them. <laughs> Here we go. Let's fix that so, little rascal. We hi, did. Tom. She got to say hi. There I you did. go. Hello. <laughs> he did say hello back. There you go. I did hear him. Yes, I did. Thank All you. Right, awesome. It's like having a celebrity on the show. <laughs> I know. It's great, isn't it? Oh, no. I always what say that. I'm just time. Watch some other motherfuckers on YouTube, and that's for real. Get your boy got on, y'all. <laughs> so we did do a top five list. We wanted to do the top five kills on film that we appreciate the most, whether it's you know this, that, or the other. Um, are you guys ready to do this? Uh, no. Mine are really not. Uh, mine are kind of off the wall kills, but I guess. Nick Pisser, are you doing this? I wasn't prepared for this. All right. Well, then then there'll be the three of us. And All if right. you have an honorable mention, we'll do them now. My honorable mention will go to the very first South Park episode that was the Halloween episode where Kenny is sawed in half with a fucking chainsaw. And it's probably the bloodiest Kenny death of all time. And I enjoyed it. <laughs> you had to lift your fucking mask lip up i'm here the whole time drinking it like a man letting it run down my face but no i'm gonna do this little trick follow up question i am your favorite per favorite piece of shit person noise 13 you're crazy man. who got who got Chris the first Jericho love and fuck I still have have my first cop I got my copy of Fisted. That's cool. Fuck yeah. Um so uh well I guess we'll go you next, Tom, if you want to, and then we'll go the harvester after you. You got any honorable I don't mentions? I do not have any honorable mentions. All right. I might be the only one that Sorry, thought of that. Dog. All right, then I'll I'm go ahead still and go fine. With you. <laughs> I'll go with my first pick. Number five isn't even a human death, but as a young kid, and two of these are 
two of them that kind of disturbed me at a young age. Um, the first one is Bishop being ripped in half by the Queen Alien. Because when I saw that as a kid, it was like, I knew that it wasn't human because we bleed red. But I also was like, do we have guts like that when I was a kid? And I remember asking my mom, do we look like that on the inside? She's like, no, but you do have about a mile worth of intestines inside you. And I remember thinking, how do I have that long of an intestines inside me? Like, it fucked with me as a kid. And I remember this very distinctly. So, number one, the first thing that made me wonder about, you know, bodily, like, harm was probably Bishop being ripped in half by the Queen on Aliens. Is that uh, Lance Henriksen? Yes. the uh, That's the stupidest yeah, fucking thing. Filled with a lot of cum. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. fucking gushing. Absolutely. Running out the mouth like a fucking gangbang victim. Gross. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, Tom. What's your number five? My number five is from the movie Frankenhooker. It's when all the fucking whores were smoking all that tampered with crack and they started exploding. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> tampered with crack. <laughs> now, see, I didn't expect this. He's throwing ones at me. I don't even know. All right. So, Harvester. So mine's from a comedy, uh, and it would be when Chubbs gets eaten by that alligator for taking his fucking hand and uh, <laughs> with uh, Adam Sandler. Yeah, that movie's <laughs> hilarious. Goes out like a man. Right on. Right on. I didn't expect that out of you, Harvester, but okay. Okay. I'm going to – okay, my number four. My number four, I thought was really cool at the time because I'd never seen anything done like it. Um, okay. Friday the 13th, part four, Jason's death as the machete slides down his fucking dome and, he go, and it goes further into his face. Like, I remember seeing that and it struck me as one of the first fucking really cool death effects I saw in the 80s. I wish I would have been informed of this list before because I have an actual bust from that scene that was uh, from the movie mold in the house. So I could have yeah. held it up and be like, oh, you meant this thing? That's fucking cool, man. I didn't know you had that. That's awesome. But yeah, that scene right there is fucking like the way he slides down and his face is like moving still. Like he feels every moment of the blade going further into his head. And the blood running out down. a little bit, man. Yeah, man. I fucking loved it, dude. That was fucking awesome. It, it, very cringy, very cool for the time. And yeah, that's my number four. You know what's unfortunate about that movie? What's that? Corey Feldman grew up to be Corey Feldman. <laughs> this is true. This is true. My God. He should have just gave up after all the girls left the band. Let me tell you that. <laughs> uh, what are we, number four? Yeah. I have uh, that lady's head getting turned into a Pez dispenser by uh, Victor Crowley in the first Hatchet movie. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Roll his head back. So what do you got, Harvester? Oh, man. I had to change up a little bit after you talking about Jason. One popped right into my head, to be honest with you. Uh, the movie absolutely sucks. You know, the one where he's like in outer space and shit. But when he goes into that hologram, right, when he's in that room and he picks that hooker up in the fucking the the fucking uh sleeping bag and he's just going to work on her around the fucking tree that's fucking hilarious he just so putting in work ever, on her have you ever seen the prophecy <coughs> not the uh christopher walken one but the one about the mutant bear <laughs> no 
So this mutant bear picks up a kid in a sleeping bag, swings it around his head, throws it against a tree, and then the fucker explodes. <laughs> if you think the fucking Jason one, cool. Check that shit out. That one almost made the list. I'm going to have to check that out for sure. The Prophecy. And it's got a mutant bear in it. Yes, the monster is a mutant, I think, a toxic waste mutated bear. Is this on Tubi as well? Sounds like some Tubi oh, shit. I'm not sure I have the uh, disc. Oh, I gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I wouldn't know about half the shit that is out there if it wasn't for your podcast, by the way. Well, what is it? Vine vine vinegram Syndrome? Vinegar Syndrome, yeah. Okay. But you should go to Severin Films first. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. If you're looking for some hidden gems, as it were. Okay, Harvester, are we on you? No, I just I went and you. Went, so it's my number three. Gotcha, okay. Okay. This one, uh... Only because I love this movie a lot, and it doesn't... Not a lot of people don't like it, but I just... I was really into the French extremity films. So uh, the very end of High Tension, when uh, after the, <laughs> where the movie stops making sense. <laughs> yeah, where the barbed wire gets wrapped and after the whacking of the face and she comes back as the dude, but you realize they're the same person. I'm talking about the concrete saw in the fucking window into that fucking dude. I remember watching that and being like, Boy, that's a little excessive. But my God, <laughs> he hits the head many times in like a fast motion, but then you see the slow-mo across the chest and the blood just arcing out. And it's like, man, like they did a really great job, in my opinion, of making a fucking guy get look like he's being fucking dismembered by a concrete saw in a car. The, the destruction of the glass and all of it just... Holy shit. Like that moment with the fucking, the tone of the fucking ambient music to it too, like just kind of sets you in a mood, but I get it, Tom. It stops making sense. But if you look at it from the, the death scene and the horrific way, it's all violent. I, I, I just, it's one of, it's on my list. That's my number three. Good old Alexander Aja. I understand. That's a weird thing that what you like you grow up and hear people talking about oh the French new wave you're like get out of here with that shit you dildo and then all these oh yeah we had a French new wave too fuck <laughs> we all sound like pretentious dickheads <laughs> right <laughs> excuse me uh my number four, 3 is from the hit motion picture Jack Frost. And this is when Shannon Elizabeth gets fucked to death by a snowman in a bathtub. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty classic. I watch it every Christmas. <laughs> Christmas movie, yeah. That one's a good one. And Shannon Elizabeth also uh, was at Astronomicon 4. And our kids got to meet her. So, uh, you know, her I knew it was going to happen. Harvester number three. Oh, terrific. all right. It's gonna have to be uh what is it? It's a saw movie. It's the one where they super glue that jackass to the seat in his car. Like uh what is it, 3D, saw 3D or some shit like that. And they got that thing set up on fucking full throttle and he doesn't ma has to peel himself off the vinyl seat and he doesn't fucking make it, he plows into the front of that front loader. That's pretty badass. Fear of being in a car accident. I can understand that one. Tom looks like he froze. Yeah. yeah, that one is pretty gnarly, though. I mean, they show him peeling his fucking skin off and shit, stuck to that vinyl seat in that El Camino. We got that got double vision. 
We got that double vision going on. That's the first on this show. <laughs> there, there you we go. go. All right. Um, all right. <laughs> so we're on number two then. Okay. Number two for me would definitely have to be uh, fucking Jaws. When the fucking uh, fisher boat captain gets fucking eight. It only fucking is my number two because of the fact that it was very traumatizing for me as a kid because I was very young when I saw it. I thought that's what sharks fucking do. And when I seen that guy getting, and you don't see intestines coming out or nothing crazy like that. Like in the Italian uh, fucking flicks that have fucking sharks in them that ripped off jaws. But the way that he was bit and you could see the little bite marks and the blood was like running out real fast. And he was screaming, and the story he told about, like, the sharks eating all the fucking people that fucking sank in that fucking boat that he was on, and shit, it just, like, it really fucked with me as a kid. So, yeah, that's my number two, is Jaws, where the fucking captain of the boat gets fucking ate. Go ahead, Tom. Am I, am I good? Okay. I yeah, just didn't good. know if I was back or not. I told you this shit was going to happen. <laughs> Anyways, my number two is fucking when Marv handcuffed himself to Kevin, punched him in his fucking cocksucker, and then cut off his fucking arms and legs so his dog could eat him. And then he sawed that motherfucker's head off. A goddamn classic Sin City. God yeah, damn, Sin City. Marv is a bad motherfucker. <clears throat> mm. And he didn't even make a noise. He wanted he never to scream. That's all even he wanted. Even when the dog had his fill, he never screamed. It was pretty yeah, crazy. Pretty yeah. Sin City's a pretty rad movie if you're into that kind of uh, artwork. Tune into the uh, episode of DWN Productions THC podcast sponsored by Fast Custom Shirts at boygob.com. That will be recorded tonight if you like Sin City. And don't forget about DWN Productions.net and fastcustomshirts.com. <laughs> rad movie, especially Marv. So my number two is going to be when fucking Negan put in work with that baseball bat on Glenn's forehead because everybody racist. else cried about it. You're a racist. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it was funny as hell, though. Yeah, I understand. Oh, man, they showed his fucking eye bug out. Uh-huh. It's pretty racist. rad. Everybody had a soft spot for Glenn, and then what happened? Yeah, that's why I liked it because everybody had a hard on for Glenn and then he got his shit pushed in. Whoa. It was hilarious. Whoa, now you're homophobic too? Dog, chill Whoa. out. Relax. <laughs> We're all friends here. Shit. Relax, dog. Hey, man, I take <laughs> shits on the podcast. I'm not homophobic. It's cool to be a gay Asian, dog. It's cool. It's cool. Last week, he was, he was pantsless. That's a little. Yeah, I was pantsless on the podcast. <laughs> Everyone's different, dog. Just let people live. <laughs> Moving on, my man. number one. My number one. <laughs> All right, my number one. Tom already mentioned. Uh, Victor Crowley runs in and cuts the guy in half. That's from fucking work. That was a lady. Uh, work <laughs> and fucking literally hacks the dude in half, pulls him in apart, and then runs up and grabs the bitch's mouth. And I swear to God, dude, it's shot so quickly that you wouldn't even notice that she was a fucking prosthetic and pulls that shit in fucking half. And that's probably the coolest death out of any slasher flick that I've ever seen, in my opinion. That half cat cool. Catch it. I mean, it was done so well, dude. And the way it circles around a little bit, and you see the tongue move, oh, shit, dude. It's icing on the cake, man. So, yeah, that's my number one. Tom, you already mentioned it, but that's cool. Go ahead with yours, sir. My number one is from the hit motion picture, Brain Damage. 
And this is when uh, old Brian picks up a lady of loose morals at a punk rock club. And uh, she takes him to the back alley to blow him, you see. And instead of getting <laughs> his dick in her mouth, Elmer, who's a parasite monster shaped like a dick, goes into her mouth and eats her brains from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> fucking terrific but i can understand ladies not being a fan of that scene but to that i would say how dare you i did not know about that movie until you reviewed it a while back like i had known about uh um what was it brain dead or dead alive i've known about that movie since i was a teenager but i didn't know about his work before that Right on. So I appreciate that I found that movie through you guys reviewing well, it. Peter so. Jackson. This is a different movie by Frank Henenlotter. Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, My this bad. is not the zombie movie. This is like a little parasitic dick monster that goes around filling people with uh, some kind of drugs and they get addicted to it and the monster eats brains so he gets the uh, Elmer gets his victims to go kill people so he can eat their brains and shit oh okay now I know what you're talking about I was thinking of bad taste wasn't I uh I think you were thinking of Dead Alive, the zombie movie. No, I'm thinking of the one before it. Meet the Feebles. Bad Taste is the one with the aliens. That's the one I'm thinking of was Bad Taste with the aliens. All right, my bad, my bad. With the I got it. Force. Okay, gotcha. And that movie is fucking awesome, too. That's in my top ten for sure. Right on. Harvester? Number your... one for me, traumatizing as a child. Okay? Hope the first time you crack that racist. fucking movie, Bambi on, and in the first couple of minutes of that flick, when they mow her fucking mom down, number one kill. Done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How dare you? I know Body Rot was here. From the Michigan Misfits, and I'm only going to say this because he's not because he's been kidnapped. Tom Martino, have you I heard any of the motherfucker? <laughs> don't don't look at me. I told you I work. I don't fucking have time to go to Michigan and kidnap some fuck. <laughs> oh man! Well, all right. We just wanted to hit you up and ask you because they've been missing for a while. There's there's pictures of them chained up in the basement. Probably being forced to do sexual favors and take naughty pictures. Absolutely. Man. And we wish them the best. I hope they're at least gentle with you gentlemen. Probably a bunch yeah. of surprise butt stuff. Does that mean they're gay now? I mean, not by choice. Man, I just hope for the best. Yeah. Either they can uh, uh, acclimate well or... You know, maybe some therapy will help them get over it when they get out of the situation they're in. Yeah, That's, I would. Or lots I mean, of marijuana. I was going to say some highly offensive things, but I would only find funny, and I'm glad I stopped myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's fucking hilarious. But I know Body Rot would say his. At least one of his fucking picks would have been RoboCop, where Murphy gets fucking shot to fucking pieces. And I'll admit, that is one of the ones that I fucking was like, whoa, bullets do that to people? Like, <laughs> when I was a kid, so. What about yeah. the spoof RoboCop where he's fucking mowing down dicks? You guys ever seen that fucking thing where he's like blowing dicks off and shit? Fuck no. You gotta Google it. There's Clip. He's like fucking <laughs> shooting dicks off. All the bad guys. He's fucking blowing their dicks off. I'm gonna look at me and he's blowing their dicks off. Maybe you should <laughs> choose your words a little better. Well, he's so. fucking <laughs> shooting them with his fucking gun, man. He's <laughs> knocking their heads off, man. Uh, I watched this movie and RoboCop was blowing all these dicks off. <laughs> <laughs> 
Was it Not the that porno? there's anything wrong with that. Getting blown is <laughs> awesome. So anybody who wants to blow people, more power to you. We need more suckers in this world. And that's the Absolutely. third realest shit I've ever fucking said. <laughs> and so anybody who doesn't know, uh, I know we talked a lot about the forever face with Tom, but that dude makes a lot of other cool shit. And yeah. people should go hit his site up, man, because he makes all sorts of crazy shit. Yeah, go to the fucking DWN Productions and look that shit up. And go hit up Joe's fucking hundreds of shirt designs over at a fucking fastcustomshirts.com. Yeah. Neck pisser, you got anything to ask the great Tom Martino? You've been silent, dude. I want at least three awesome questions. Three you awesome. Go. Now you put me on the spot. Fuck, Fuck yeah. Uh, favorite, uh, favorite car. Favorite what? Car. Car? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's, like go the, uh, guy. let's go with the Akuda uh, from Phantasm. Hell yeah. Nice pick. Very rare. What is your personal favorite mask you've made? Good one. Nice Maybe one, the uh, bastard. We talked about bad taste earlier, so uh, maybe that one. Hell yeah. Dogs or cats? Fucking dogs. Wait, now you're calling me gay? What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Hey, I not got, that I got that, can't yeah, can't not that there's anything wrong with that. Live and let live, but yeah, dogs, dude. <laughs> so how do you feel about Joe Bob Briggs? I watch him on Shudder, and I wanted to know your opinion on the man that uh, keeps the drive-in alive. Uh, I grew up uh, on the other channel, the old USA Network, with uh, old Gilbert and Rhonda. So uh, I can understand why people like old blowjob, but, you know, he's not for me. I was just curious because I do watch him pretty. The uh, only reason is, is because I did grow up watching Gilbert and Rhonda as well, and it wasn't for him uh, or them. I wouldn't know about joysticks, fucking, you know, other fucking retarded-ass movies like that back in the day that just were made for fucking... House. My bad. <laughs> but they were stupid ass movies. And a lot of them were there for the oh, fucking titty. Sure. Didn't see the titties. But I did yeah. watch on, I was original uh, watcher of the movie channel and Showtime, so I did catch Joe Bob back in the day as well. But yeah, never let me not liking something attract anybody. From not liking something. Look like what you like. If you listen to the podcast, you're all oh, this guy talking shit. It's all it is. It's talking shit trying to be entertaining. I fucking like shit that you guys don't like. And everyone's fucking different, man. So never fucking liking something and being a fan of something is fucking awesome because it's something that makes you happy. So never let somebody take. Uh oh, we lost him. But at least he was making sense. Never let that shit take anything away from you being a fan of what you like. Like he was saying, he yeah. is pretty. He is pretty harsh on things sometimes. But the thing is, that's his opinion. Like I, I get that. I can laugh at his opinion because I can be like, oh well, I don't know about that. I like that movie. I've done that before many a time. We're going to see if we can bring him back on to close this thing out. <clears throat> he says he is dealing with the storm where he's at. So. He's, back, he's, Tom. Got, he's got a squirrel power in his internet. <laughs> yeah. Do whatever you like. Like it, don't like it. I don't give a fuck. Just hold up for a couple more minutes, internet. <laughs> So, yeah, let everybody know where they can find you, Tom, and we'll let you go so you can get back to work because I know you're a busy man. BWNProductions.net. Uh, hit me up if you want some custom work made. I'm going to be busy for the next uh, couple months, so it might be a couple months to uh, do 
just hit me up. I'll let you know all that shit. DWNproductions.net, either DWN Productions or DWN P-R-O-D on social media. I'm sure you'll find it. Boygob.com. If you enjoyed whatever this is, maybe you'd like to hear Joe and I do whatever this is so check that shit out there's links to the old youtube page but you can just type boy gob in youtube and i'm sure it'll say did you mean this you can click no no i'll just click on the boy gob one and it'll be there a weekly podcast should be uh dropping mondays like i said we used to go live but now it'll just be uploaded there after we record at boygob.com and on the youtube page fastcustomshirts.com check out all joe's shirts and uh since this is a underground related podcast again i have to thank axe for you know letting me be a part of the stuff they're doing a small part i can't act like fucking oh i do all this but for being a small part i appreciate that shit and helping me get my art out there for all these fucking years uh, i'm glad you guys dig the shit for sure i appreciate you guys uh bringing me on and bullshitting and all this and it was it's fun sorry i uh i haven't been able to come on for two years but I don't know what happened. I just got so busy. <clears throat> there ain't no problem with that. Uh, Noise has one more question before we get out of here. Fuck Ask him, Tom man. Chris Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's about, what's, your, what's your favorite wrestling spot? <laughs> Ask me that shit. Tom says fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you mean by wrestling spot? And then ask him why he, he's wrong when he d doesn't like, when he doesn't say Jericho. What, what does I he mean, mean by that? Fucking, you know, personality, character aside, Chris Jericho just comes off like a jag off. Why is it every time Chris Jericho donates to a GoFundMe, I got to hear about this shit. It's like, you know, when you donate to this shit, you can donate anonymously. Are you just donating this shit so everybody talks about you and how good of a guy you are? Shit just fucking <laughs> rubs me the wrong way. Fuck that, dude. It is nice of him to give that money, though, but still, that just fucking, that kind of shit rubs me the wrong way. And he just comes off as a fucking dildo. Dude, I always thought that Randy Orton came off as a dick, too. You know, I'm just Fucking saying jack wagons. You know? Yeah, I uh, like I see that shit, that meme or whatever the kids call it these days where fucking he looks up and be like, hey, are we done? And, you know, that shit always makes me laugh. So I'm not going to say anything bad about it. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, there's some wrestlers that you could tell if you were to meet them outside, they would not give you the time of day or at least treat you like shit on the way out. And some of them are fucking humble. And, they're, you know, Jericho, in my opinion, compared to someone like Edge or Christian, might treat you like I don't really want to talk to you if they saw you on the street. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, to be fair, I don't give a fuck for those two guys either. <laughs> so they can all go jump in the lake and Tom doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. The tables, ladders, and chairs match, though. Come yeah, on. Yeah, Hardy boys, can they can get fucked. Uh, the Dudley boys were funny when they were in ECW, but... Definitely. The Dudley boys were fucking hilarious. One of the hardest out of them all, I felt, because at least they could get real heel heat. You know? They could they could get a riot going if they wanted to, just by talking enough shit. And that's, that's, that's talent. Bushwhackers, because they used to force feed motherfuckers sardines. They used to lick <laughs> kids. That's fucked up. <laughs> they used to go around licking kids. Well, the was, I'll tell you this: the British bulldog was probably a dick because all he cared about was getting fucked up all the time. True story. That guy was yeah. fucking wits every fucking moment. 
Breast empowerment, mate. Yeah, exactly. But if you don't live a healthy lifestyle, don't expect to live long is my only fucking advice. Hey, thanks for telling me, a big fat guy, that I'm going to die soon. Appreciate that <laughs> shit, Doug. Hey, you don't live a fucking life of fucking drugs and, and, and extra extra excess, do you? Ah, uh, I mean, I was, I guess, ah, uh, fuck, I'm looking at these beer cans over here. <laughs> I mean, I mean, nobody gives a fuck if you drink a little bit, Tom. You've nah, that. yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to get out of here. Thank you, Tom, for your time. You've Thank spent you. about an hour with us now, and we appreciate it. Um, shit, in the future, we can do this again sometime. Maybe we'll have Joe with us if we can get it going around, uh, get get the things uh, going a little earlier. Or just know? get Joe on by himself and see if you guys can understand Spanish on your own. It'll be funny to watch. <laughs> oh, I would love to fucking do that. Dude, for real talk about music with the guy because he loves fucking hair metal and the old fucking 80s shit. That'd be fun. But anyway. Yeah, he is old. <laughs> we're going to get out of here and thanks for everybody tuning in and we'll see you next time on the Horcast Live. Thanks, Tom.